Like uh, spotting Blackpool Tower, this I've uh, just seen the uh, chimney for Ena Mill, and I've not even uh, got anywhere near Bow Bridge yet. Got mining noses. series of other mills called Overbridge Mills. The last one of those was uh, was taken down in 2014, just on this land here to me on the uh, right hand side. There it's housing. It's a shame when uh, beautiful buildings go. But we've still got this one, we've still got Ena Mill. Awesome building. There's the chimney that uh, Fred Dibner went up. With a few pair of ladders. Little mill pond at the back. Dick's Adventures at Ena Mill. Just arrived at uh, Ena Mill to do some filming. Uh, I'm meeting Simon here, who's uh, one of the owners. He's going to take me up on the roof so we can uh, have a good look round at this absolutely gorgeous building.
Sam has just brought me up here. Uh, just took the drone up just to get a few uh, shots of the mill. Just going to walk around the perimeter of the top to show you some of the views. You can see Rivington Pike in the distance over there, where I normally go to. So, Ena Mill construction started in uh, 1908 and it was finally finished in uh, 1913. It's good because between 1908 and uh, 1913 there was a bit of a slump in the uh, cotton industry. So, we see those new houses there, that's where uh, the Howe Bridge Mills were really, really close to. Uh, to Ena Mill. So Ena Mill, when it opened in uh, 1913, employed quite a few hundred uh, people from the local area and it continued to do so till uh, 1999 when it closed. Then uh, Simon and his partner bought it and uh, turned it into a retail outlet, which had become uh, a go to destination. Look down there, you can see the old mill pond and uh, there was a fire in uh, Howbridge Mill and it was the water from this mill pond that stopped it from uh, taking all properly so uh, Ena Mill basically saved the uh, mill at uh, Howbridge. I just wanted to highlight this uh, bit of block and tackle here that's uh, over the edge of the building. You see that's obviously been used in the past for lifting things up. There's some age in that and there's another piece to it there. Awesome. Just want to look at some of the uh, architecture. Absolutely stunning. When you think about it, they, they knew that very few people would actually see all these details, like that little swirly bit there. But uh, back in the uh, Edwardian times, they really didn't pay attention to uh, to detail. Absolutely gorgeous, stunning building. Yeah, this tower's gorgeous. And even when you go along the wall, <laughs> you just look at the detail in it. Absolutely beautiful. So you've just got to love the simplicity of design as well. Look at that for a fire escape. Brilliant. Here I found some uh, really old equipment. Not sure what it is. But it's obviously got to do with the uh, heritage of this place. So I just want to capture the majesty of this chimney. It's an absolutely massive structure. And when you see it just in the flyby, it uh, doesn't do it justice. But you imagine uh, Fred Dibner getting the ladders, putting them here, climbing to the top of them, straddling them, putting another set of ladders up doing that about 20 times so you've got them right at top that's absolutely awesome it's like the road to hell so you can see they use uh, proper tie-offs now for the ladders uh, back in uh, Fred's day he just knocked the plaster out knocked them in with an hammer <laughs> and that was it but uh, you'll see a few there and then the ladders start going up to the top but those are just normal wooden ladders so it's obvious that they still do them the same way as they used to do but that's just uh, phenomenal I don't know if you can catch this on video but uh, they're not straight <laughs> they're thin heck I might walk up them anyway <laughs> Never mind, put them here as well. You can see how the uh, bottom ones are strapped on.
Adventures, Monkey Dicks Adventures on YouTube. That's Ina Mill, a beautiful red brick terracotta mill from uh, 1908. And a great retail experience. One thing we talked about, uh, myself and Simon, were the uh, the Luddites. They used to uh, try to burn down factories and uh, stop them from running in you know, order to save the uh, the weaving communities. I was telling him about uh, a mill at West Orton that uh, I was built in 1803, 1804, but in 1812 a group of men from uh, Chobent, which is now Atherton, uh, marched across on the 24th of April. Uh, it, put a little lad who was 12, Abraham, through one of the windows for getting to open up the mill and they trashed the looms and uh, set the place on fire. They were uh, later captured and four of the people were sent to uh, Lancaster where they were tried and hanged. One of those four people hung was uh, young 12 year old Abraham and uh, nine other people who took part were sent to Australia for seven years. So, uh, Atherton, all the, all the lands around Atherton were owned by uh, the family of Atherton's in the uh, 1600s. And from about the mid 1600s, for 300 years, uh, there was a family called the Chokes, and uh, the area was known locally as uh, Chovent. So we're just going to go to uh, Chovent uh, Chapel down this road. There's still a few things that uh, have the name of Chovent on them. Thought it could be because uh, it's likely to be one of the places that. Uh, the guys would have headed out from to go to West Orton Mill. Right. Yep, yeah. Chobent Utilitarian. <laughs> I can't even say that. Uh, Chobent Chapel and Chobent Hall, uh, 1721. So obviously the, uh, the name had took prominence by then before reverting uh, to uh, Atherton. So we're going to go from here, we're going to go across to West Orton, where the mill was, because after it was demolished, it was uh, rebuilt as a cotton mill. It used to be a silt mill, but it was rebuilt as a cotton mill. And uh, that was finally taken down in 1912. land where it stood is still just open land. It's right near the centre of uh, West Orton as well and it's uh, never been used for anything else in 109 years. So let's go and have a look at that. I believe there's a plaque on a pub across the road called the uh, White Lion. We'll look at that. I believe also there's um, a stained glass window in a pub called the Wagon and Horses, which is a really old pub, that uh, depicts the, uh, the fire at uh, West Orton Mill. So we'll see if we can find that as well. So uh, I hope the four people who got uh, hung weren't done so at uh, Lancaster Jail, because uh, I've been there once when I was on holiday, and uh, as they went and stood in the cells, and it's absolutely pitch black. And then uh, they bring them out of the cells and take them through into this little round room, which has got an man's noose in there, and uh, also your coffin. Then they take you out onto this little uh, ledge where there's a lot of uh, people from around standing watching the execution, cheering it on. And you basically just walk off the edge of the ledge and, uh, and dangle there. So, uh, a really horrible way to die. A nice 
bait being hung anyway, but uh, I think that's particularly harrowing the way that it uh, was done at Lancaster Jail. Yeah, so just around this corner is going to be the uh, site of uh, West Orton Mill. But unless I'm really unlucky, and it's been built on, there'll still be a piece of waste around the folks, I'm in West Orton uh, on Monkey Dicks. I'm just going to uh, have a look at the uh, land where the uh, West Orton Mill was that got burnt down in uh, 1812. It's just a piece of wasteland there. Looks like it might have been used as a car park at some point, but it's uh, really overgrown. But uh, I have to believe there was a mill here. I'm presuming that it wasn't just on this little piece of land here that it uh, spread out a bit further. Aye. I have to believe in it that that uh, little lad Abram was uh, pushed through a window here so that he could uh, open doors for the rest of them so that they could uh, wreck the looms and uh, burn the place down. And that poor lad was uh, executed by hanging. Which is there for something might be put through a window and opening a door, it uh, seems a bit much. It's uh, hard to believe with it being so close to uh, West Orton Town Centre that this land isn't used for something. So this is the uh, White Lion pub. And there's the blue plaque on the side. So on the 24th of April 1812, the looms of a steam-powered mill built across from here in 1803-1804 were smashed and the mill set alight by Luddite rioters, four of whom were hanged and four transported to Australia for seven years. And apparently, they actually sat in the front room of this pub to, uh, to plot what they were going to do. So there's the White Lion, which must have been there for quite a few years because it's only across the way there where the mill was. So here's the monkey at the Wagon and Horses on the A6. Monkey Dick's Adventures, huge. Because apparently they've got a stained glass window in there that uh, commemorates the uh, burning down of the mill in West Ark. So here's the uh, stained glass depicting the uh, burning down of the mill and the Scots Greys who were sent in to uh, quell the unrest. There's a pub. There you go, there's the mill on fire, my starting mill. Excavation. the Luddites and the people captured. So all the best adventures uh, finish with a pint. Every one of the other windows in here depicts some other piece of history around West Orton. Really nice touch. <laughs> 